Welcome in to the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account with them. I'm Rudo, joined by Evan Rowell today as AJ is driving his way to Canada at the moment. So we figured it was time to uh, take a look at some of the rumors flying around. A lot of you have been DMing me asking us to talk about some of these. So it's uh it's time i guess it's time to dive in obviously the the main one that a lot of people are talking about right now is the ottawa senator's interest in nazim kadri <sighs> evan uh, where do you want to start with this one because this rumor just seems ridiculous to me yeah what are you, what are we getting from ottawa because yeah. i don't see much that's exactly. going to help a team that needs to win right now yep <laughs> It just doesn't make a ton of sense either way. Ottawa is is not a team that needs one year of Nazem Kadri either. They're a team that should be looking towards building towards the future. And to make it worth the Avs while, they'd have to give up something that doesn't make a ton of sense for them to give up as far as their future is concerned. Mm-hmm. Um. It the way I read it is like Ottawa trying to take advantage of maybe the Avs would expose Kadri and that they would just trade him rather than expose him for nothing. Which, and that doesn't make sense to me either way, but I don't know what if that would mean Ottawa would just turn around and trade him again because like you said, Ottawa is not the type of team that needs a Kadri for one year. That doesn't make a ton of sense there. Yeah. Yeah. And I I mean, do we even think that the Avs would expose Kadri. I, even to me, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. I don't think they would expose him. I could see them looking at the trade market, but just not you have to, Yeah, you have to get a second line center back either way. Like we saw in the playoffs, even though Kadri was bad to end the regular season, like they missed him. Yep. They needed him. Definitely. So they don't have someone right now that can just step into that role. So it just doesn't make a ton of sense on both sides, really. Yeah, I I pretty much agree there. There's an unnamed NHL executive on the record saying, I wouldn't be shocked if Colorado traded Kadri. I'm not saying that Joe is shopping Kadri. I would say they probably found out they missed him when he was suspended. But Tyson Jost is coming along pretty well. If they can't sign Landis Gog, maybe they keep Kadri. But I wouldn't be shocked if he moves. Um, I would be shocked if he moves. <laughs> yeah, Tyson Jost is coming along well, but not as a second line center. Yeah, the Vegas <laughs> series pretty much proved that Tyson Jost is not a two C in my mind. Yep. But the the, the, the conversation about moving Kadri probably centers more around Newhook and how much you believe he's ready for that type of a role offensively if he can jump in in the top six for the avalanche and be productive. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at with it. Unless, like you said, you're getting a two C coming back, which trades start to make a lot less sense than if you're just flipping piece for piece, especially because Kadri only has one year left on his deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, that, not to mention, you know, We've we've met talked about this before, but Kadri does have a limited no trade clause. Yeah, he's already v- vetoed trades when he was in Toronto to Calgary. So, don't know if Ottawa would be on his list. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, with the new hook thing, it's like a new season is a new season. So, the new season is when you tried new things at the start of the year. But I have a hard time seeing them just go from not playing him on the fourth line in the playoffs or playing him sporadically to suddenly you're the second line center. Go get him. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just doesn't it seems like a big jump. <laughs> it does. It it would be aggressive to say the least. Um I know you mentioned um well, I guess we we both kind of mentioned getting a 2C back possibly through another trade is who's the, who out there would you go get that would make Kadri more expendable? Like, that actually play center as Phil to know good enough is maybe a Nugent Hopkins out of Edmonton, something like that. Well, Phil, Phil to know can't score, but he did just put on a masterclass defensively defensive sure. shutdown series, but 
heading into unrestricted free agency, I mean, what are you going to give that guy who has had tr- trouble scoring goals? Like, you going to give us that guy going to have your second line center, but give him what five six million? Is that what he's going to get on the market? Not I don't produce, know. Yeah, yeah. So, I do love what he could bring uh, on the defensive end, but it just offensively, that's not the type of guy you want behind McKinnon, ideally. Um, beyond that, like. Yeah, center wise, there's doesn't seem to be a ton out there. There's uh, the chat has plenty of choices. Is Honestly. this AJ? Is AJ that's, on that's the road or is it fake AJ. account? It's probably AJ. I, I can never Tomas tell hurdle. anymore. AJ loves hurdle, so it's I, probably AJ. Okay. I love we also have a super too. chat when y'all get a chance. Yeah, we'll get to it. Tomas Hurdle would be he would be an awesome second line center behind McKinnon. Now that yeah. would cost a lot, I have a feeling. <laughs> Yeah, the hurdle would not be cheap. Some of y'all throwing out like uh, Eichel, which obviously would be great. But you're talking about massive, massive deals at that point. Um, Some other interesting ones. Paul Stastny, not really a 2C anymore at this point in his career. That would be a tough one. Monaghan could be interesting. With, uh, I mean... I'm still skeptical that Calgary actually blows it up because their biggest problem is themselves. But um, a couple of super chats here from Spence. Thank you very much. Would you two and AJ agree that if the Avs traded Nazem Kadri to Ottawa for Josh Norris, that it would be a step back this season? This season? Yeah. Now, Josh Norris did have a nice season in Ottawa, and I think he is a good young player, but... You're banking on a lot of hope there. And, yeah, I think that'd be a step back. I, I, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt it's a step back in the the immediate. It's also, you know, in three years' time, Norris is going to probably be significantly more impactful player than Kadri is. But uh, the problem with going out and getting even a Norris is there's no cost certainty there. He's on the last year of his ELC, which which would be great for the one year. But, you know, if he has a 50, 60 point season, all of a sudden the Avs have to figure out a way to pay that dude, which, you know, maybe they can do that. We're talking about getting much larger pieces than that in, in the immediate with moving pieces around. It's just the trade probably isn't as simple as Kadri for Norris you have to figure out the salary cap side of, of paying for Norris down the line as well. And also why is Ottawa trading a young center? For right, yeah, I, was, I was just kind of ignoring <laughs> yeah. the fact that it makes zero sense for Ottawa to really do that. But um, would a Chris Tierney swap for Nas swap make sense for the record? I am 100% team Nas and I want Nas to just play out the last season of his deal. Uh, it makes sense for Ottawa. I think the abs just get strictly worse if they, want Tierney over Kadri. I agree. Yeah, Tierney's a step down. Yeah. Uh, Tierney's highest scoring season was 48 points, and that was a couple years ago when he was basically out of his 1C. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. The the production just is not the same that you would get out of Kadri. Not to say Tierney's bad or anything, but he, I believe he's a UFA at the end of this coming season too, right? So yeah. even that, you're not getting anything there. Yeah, you're just you're just getting worse, I think, by going and getting tyranny over Kadri. Um, all right, Spence just keeps sending us super <laughs> chats, so we'll just keep running through them. Uh, would you be interested in Thomas Hurdle for one year? Yeah, I mean, definitely. It, I know AJ and Evan both really like him, but Hurdle is a super interesting piece. Uh, in the immediate, not cheap for the one year, but you look at a guy who, who has the high end scoring ability that can probably outproduce an Azim Kadri in that given role. He had 43 points in 50 games this past year has a 74 point season in his career. If he can stay healthy and that that's the big question mark with hurdle, right? So and, that guy's a monster. I love that guy. Uh, that's another one where, 
he's going to get paid next summer. So you're looking at maybe. I yeah. would assume you have to swap Kadri with him. To yeah. At least just to make the, the money, money work in the immediate. Yeah. And then from there you're adding. So it's not a not a cheap addition. And then you have to think, well, how much of an upgrade really is this for one year? Yeah, is it worth it? And I mean, what what would you pay as far as like adding additional? Would you throw a first in on that to get hurdle for a year, or is that too expensive? <laughs> well, this draft kind of sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> so I would just take it. Just throw That's away that first. Want. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, it's every trade rumor is great until you start talking about the price, right? And then everyone realizes, oh, that's going to cost way more than I thought it did. <laughs> Suddenly, teams don't want to do those deals. Yeah, and even you talk about the Denos, it's like, well, he'd be an awesome addition, but what are you paying that guy? Because <laughs> teams are probably going to be willing to pay him more than I would think the Avs would. Yeah. Uh, we already kind of talked about Deno if you didn't catch the start of the show, Spence, but we didn't really touch on Nuge that much. Um. Well, yeah, how do you feel about it? I'm not a I'm not a huge. I mean, I think he's a really good player. I'm just he's also going to be more expensive than because he's is he an unrestricted free agent? Yeah, he's that's well, if, if he doesn't sign, he'd be a UFA. Because he's already making six million, I think, because he was on like a six by six deal. So yeah, that's another pricey guy that you got to sign. And I mean, I is do, there like could the flat cap help? get that guy potentially for someone like Colorado because on the one hand, yeah, 18, 19, 19, 20, 69 points, 61 points. Uh, but he did only have 35 points this year. So his production was down quite a bit um, as McDavid and dry were just doing all of the heavy lifting on that team. Mm-hmm. Is, is there a world where maybe you get him a little bit cheaper? Um, potentially, I think maybe a lot of these guys are going to get to that talking period there. Cause there's an extended talking period this year, isn't it? Or something like that. I mean, there's, you have the extended Seattle talking period mm-hmm. and then you have the like weird between time mm-hmm. from post uh, entry draft. Cause I'm wondering if a lot of these guys will get to that point and be like, okay, maybe yeah, we're not going to get what we thought. Yeah. Because... Style wise, I think Kadri makes you kind. Of, I, I hear you. We don't want to talk about size and all that stuff, but he makes more sense than Nuge. But in terms of how they play, I do like Nuge more as a center because he's a distributor, whereas Kadri, we know, has tunnel vision at times. A yeah, lot of times. Certainly more selfish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I do like his style at center a little bit more. But again, you're looking at. I, I guess if you're trading Kadri at that point, you're just like, hey, we're going to get assets and replace him with Nuge, and then you're kind of weighing it there. Okay. Well, thank you for for sending us the money <laughs> and, and sharing all of the rumors to make sure they get on the show, <laughs> Spence. Very appreciated. Uh, yeah, if the Avs want to go out and actively acquire a 2C, Nas has to move, full stop. Um, they're not going to move Nas down to 3C. It's um, it's not impossible, but I would say it's very unlikely financially for them to be capable of doing that. Yeah. Um, Wenberg, Vorak, Schmaltz, all not, don't do it for me. <laughs> I, you're not making yourself better. I'm not moving NASA. Yeah. I'm with one of those guys, unless somebody's like offering something ridiculous for Kadri. Yeah, right. It, it, you'd have to give something extra. Very nice to make that deal worth it for Colorado in my mind. But uh, and then one more super chat from Let's Go Avs. Uh, I don't see Deno making more than Kadri's four point five mil, easily affordable, uh, maybe financially. But again, you're talking about a, a weird fit with Deno, and and I'm not saying it doesn't make a ton of sense. He does have a fifty point season under his belt. There is some production there, but the goal scoring, his highest goal scoring season is 13 goals. So when you drop him into a lineup, I don't hate it, but you're leaning more on Burakovsky and whoever ends up being on that left wing. Yeah. So. Deneau is 
I think he's going to get more than four and a half. I mean, we might be completely wrong just because of this cap, and we have no idea how anything's going to play out this summer, but he might be leveraging this postseason defensive shutdown into something that we might look back on and be like, well, you probably shouldn't have paid that. It, yeah, it'll be – I think guys like to know the market is going to be really interesting this year because to know will be a UFA, but – the production is way down and it, for a guy who does have a 50 point season, you would think there'd be a decent price tag there. Yes. The defense is elite, but our team's willing to pay for it is the big question. Uh, what are your guys? Perfect cadre trade. We will get to that in the second period. We do have to talk about Breckenridge Brewery, the official beer of DNVR, which you can get down at the DNVR bar, or grab their hard seltzer packs, the 15-can sampler, absolutely delicious seltzer from your local liquor store. Great stuff. Use the Breck Beer Locator online to find it near you, unless you're in Canada apparently. Then hit up AJ, and uh, he's bringing some seltzers up there, or so I've heard. Maybe you can get your hands on one if you're if you're Winnipeg local. Uh, also, check out Gabby Insurance. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash D-N-V-R. Stands for Get a Better Insurance. You can save yourself hundreds of dollars with Gabby on both your home and auto insurance every year. Pretty much everyone here at DNVR has used it and saved at least that much. In some cases, well over a thousand dollars saved. It's completely free and easy to use. There's no reason not to head over there and at least check it out to see if you can save yourself some money on your insurance. So highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, check them out because they're awesome. Also, consider signing up for an annual DNVR membership. Get yourself a free shirt, a free mask, a bunch of awesome other stuff as well. Big beers at the bar. If you really want to go in, if you're a golfer, you can get the uh, the big golf membership as well, which gets you all of the regular DNVR membership stuff, plus you get to go golf with us in the DNVR league. It, other stuff like that. Had a blast uh, last Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday. I can remember three days ago. I swear. Going to go again down to uh, Spring Valley on Monday with uh, with the golf bros. So should be should be a fun time down there as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, to that question... Yeah, would you guys drink the Molson Kiss by the Cup? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, to be what honest. is that? <laughs> uh, I don't mind regular Molson. It's fine for like a pretty standard beer. It's no, it's no Breck Brew, but Molson's okay. <laughs> um, and then yeah, what are your guys' perfect cadre trade? I mean, in the realm of reality, I think it's pretty tough for the Avs to get value out of moving Kadri. Like, for them to get better than Kadri and dump Kadri's contract, they're going to have to pay a big price. Yeah, it's. Is there even a perfect Kadri trade? Because teams are going to try to lowball you after what just happened in the postseason. Yeah. Because they're going to say, okay, well, he's one hit away from being suspended getting, forever yeah. yeah getting like suspended 25 percent of the season yeah so, and that's the side that the abs have to weigh is you know is that something we want to be dealing with potentially so it's uh there really isn't a perfect because the only perfect trade is if you're going to get something good for him knowing that you have that you are confident that you can get a new or a deno at, to replace him like, because no, I don't, it doesn't make sense for me that any team would trade for Kadri and just swap second line centers. That just doesn't make yeah, any sense. Uh, right. I think the perfect trade for Kadri is probably like dumping him on another team for futures because you went out and did a massive trade for Jack Eichel or something yeah. <laughs> on the other side that didn't have ca- anything to do with Kadri directly. But yeah. And I mean, all this Deneau talk in the chat is very interesting. It, he's not a goal scorer, but he does have high distribution numbers. Like his assist numbers these last couple of years have been good. So you're just kind of banking on him bouncing back a little bit offensively. But it's like any unrestricted free agent, it's the contract that scares the crap out of you. And yep. this is just a it's just an impossible year to predict predict contracts, I think. Like Yeah. At, for UFAs it's very tough. It it must suck going into unrestricted free agency this year. Like 
especially to know who's in his prime. Like, this should be his contract year, and now they're not going to get what they maybe thought they could do two years ago. It's literally Molson kissed by the cup is literally just beer that was poured in the Stanley Cup. All right, sure. Um, why is that? Why is it called that? What? <laughs> which cup? Because I know there's at least three cups. There's the one that they give the teams. There's the one that they use for their day by the cup travel, and there's the one that sits at the Hockey Hall of Fame. So. Does it matter if you had the opportunity to kiss a Stanley Cup or drink out of the Stanley Cup? Would it matter which one of those three? I mean, I probably you wouldn't do it from any care. Like, I don't really care if it was poured in the cup. I'm definitely a person who doesn't touch the cup uh, <laughs> unless the team you're covering or you play for or root for win it. I'm not superstitious enough like that. I, <laughs> I The whole don't touch the cup thing, it's like... Listen, I'm 35 years old. I'm not making the NHL. <laughs> like, I don't care. I'll touch the cup. I'll drink out of it. Whatever. If somebody <laughs> somebody's saying I could do that, I'll do it. Whatever. I mean, this is to the let's go have super chat here. We're talking about Dano wouldn't have to be the scorer. To a certain point, I hear what you're saying. You want him to distribute to someone like Burakovsky. Um. But, and this is where we're going to get into some other rumors beyond Kadri. What do the Avs do with that other wing? Because right now, Saad is going to hit free agency as it stands today. Do you think the Avs can bring, bring Saad back? Or what are some other targets that they could have for that, that wing spot on the second line? This is where we talk about Kachuk. Yep. <laughs> Oh, because he would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> as much as people would hate that hate that guy, and for good reason. When he's not on your team, he's a good guy to hate. Oh, would he be exactly what this team needs right now? He is an awesome player, and he would cost a lot. That's the only thing. All right, so that's the super dream is you somehow trade out Kadri. You somehow dump like EJ's contract yeah, and probably would have to do more. And then you bring in a second line of Kachuk, Dano, and Burakovsky. Honestly, like I was thinking if you're trading for Kachuk and you have Burakovsky on the other line, is that the type of scenario where you're like, maybe this is where we try to go cheap and give new hook the second line job. And then we try to build around those guys. Cause then you have a first line winger playing on your second line. That is true. And that's the other risk you take is obviously you want depth down the middle and then you're just banking on new hook becoming what you hope he can become. Yeah. I, if they truly are done I'm... with Kadri, Kadri and Kachuk on the same line would just be shenanigans. I mean, yes. I, would, I would love that line. Yeah, I, That line would be a ton of fun. Teams would hate playing against it, but uh, it's it would be tough, I think, just given where the Avalanche are right now, right? They, they're going to go into next season being contenders. Their goal is going to be to, to, you know, make conference finals, win the cup. It's hard to YOLO a two C like New Hook if that's your if that's your game plan. It's hard even with a Kachuk, even with a Burakovsky, you know, flanking him to help. I really struggle seeing the team just saying, screw it, New Hook's a two C. I agree. I'm just saying that's the scenario where you're like, Okay, we've surrounded him with maybe they can get away some with great it. players. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna shine. This is how he's gonna do it. Yeah. That that's fair. I I don't have any argument there, but I also don't. I the thing is, there's no backup plan then, because as it stands right now, if Kadri's your two C and it goes poorly, you can just drop New Hook in there and see what happens. Yeah, I, but I, we all assume New Hook would get a chance, but we don't know. But yeah, right, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, whoever. But if you're just you're getting rid of Kadri and dropping New Hook in there, I uh, you. It better work because we already know Joe's can't play two C. Confer, 
pretty clearly can't play 2C for an extended period of time at the very least. Yeah, Comfort is not even a C, if we're being yeah. honest. <laughs> Fair enough. Plays better on the wing, certainly of late. Um, all right. So to to recap this forward talk, I think the expectation is Kadri still not going anywhere. I expect to see him as 2C in the as opening night lineup come 21-22. But... Yeah, it's. I wouldn't be surprised if there just is not a ton of movement this summer, just because of how tight things are. It's it, just not. You don't. You can't do much right now. I, I, yeah, I I agree. At least until it's hard to predict what's going to happen. At least until after the expansion draft, and then you'll have a better hold on one where teams' holes are, and two how much cap room teams actually have. Um, yeah, getting a Confer or a Don Square Graves taken frees up a chunk of change for you. So yep, exactly. makes makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, <laughs> all these people talking about Nemeth was at KYG. I don't even know what that means. I'm not surprised none of these these guys are still hanging around. The season just ended a week ago. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. I, <laughs> not that weird for them to. Uh, still be in town but i i would be shocked if the evs signed nemeth i would have to avoid social media for a long time <laughs> <laughs> i just I, I don't know i wouldn't understand how the evs analytics department don't look at that and don't beg the evs not to do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah if, if my fear of that happening will be if Graves gets taken in the expansion draft, then they're like, we need a penalty killer. I've, well, I mean, what's your, uh, what are your feelings on, on AJ's favorite interesting defenseman and Jamie Alexiak he's, potentially being out there? I have a, he's going to get paid. I have a feeling. You think outpriced? Yeah. What, what happened to him at the, didn't he get traded somewhere? And then he just, did he just disappear? I don't really, he's still with Dallas. Oh, I thought he got traded somewhere. But no, it looks like he was just with Dallas for the entire year. Yep. Don't know. They didn't make yeah, the playoffs though. So I think he's gonna be a guy who gets the big bucks. Yeah, big huge defenseman hitting unrestricted free agency who's like on the uptick. Seems yeah. to have finally figured things out. Yeah, I think he's gonna get paid. He, <laughs> I mean people wanted to trade for him at the deadline, so it's not surprising that people would want to sign him this summer. True enough. I don't. I mean, his his season total or season high in his career is only fourteen points. To be fair, he also appears to never be healthy. But <laughs> I mean, we already know the NHL is very much a bunch of size queens. So, mm -hmm. especially if Montreal wins with Weber, Edmondson, yeah. if their top four is just gigantic people. So. All the big dudes for sure. Yeah. Um, I think I, I know a lot of people are saying they'll overpay, but I think this off season is one where it might just be hard for teams to overpay guys, you know, unless you want to go play for, a uh, for dumpster diver teams or possibly Seattle. Yeah. I'm sitting here saying, Oh, he's going to be overpriced. And then we're going to see, I'll probably be stunned by a lot of these contracts in a month when they get signed. Well, I talked about this with AJ a little bit the other day too. If it's anything like last year, we're going to see a lot of these like middling contract, four million, five million dollar guys. It took them a long time to actually get their deals done in the off season. You, you know, guys like Hoffman waited all the way till training camp, basically. Yeah, the Toffoli contract took took a little bit, I think. Yeah, yeah. So it looks pretty good right now. You know, that one looks <laughs> like a steal right now. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. Um, but yeah, it, the flat cap, the, in that situation has made predicting these types of things incredibly tough, but I also think some of these rumor mill things are spiraling out of control. Like all this cadre <laughs> stuff, <laughs> we're talking about it. Cause that's what y'all wanted to talk about, but 
I really don't think Kadri gets moved unless something really crazy happens. Uh, yeah, at least this uh, this weird season ending late is going to make the end of July interesting because usually the end of July, August is like the worst time the of year. Nothing happening time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, well, we can take our second period of break there. We are brought to you by Strava Craft Coffee, the CBD-infused coffee that has really changed lives out there. It's great stuff. You can get 25% off when you use code DNVR25 online to your first purchase. Yeah, your first purchase. The rest of your purchases, you get 20% off if you use their subscription service. Or, of course, you can always try the cold brew down at the DNVR bar. Also check out Chevalier Mortgage. Both Mike and Virginia have been doing their stuff for a long time. The rates are incredible right now to buy a home if you want to get on them in on that. Plus, Mike is a certified financial planner, so they're more than just a great rate. They can hook you up with a great loan for everything going on with your own financial picture. You visit them at dnvrmortgage.com and Sign up for your chance to win a free DNVR shirt or just general merch. I, they're giving away stuff from DNVR all the time over there, as well as get yourself a free consultation. Again, you can sign up at dnvrmortgage.com. And you can also call Virginia at a phone number that I totally have pulled up and don't have to look up right now. Uh, hang on. I'm totally prepared. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Call Virginia at 303-257-6578. Or again, go to dnvrmortgage.com. Michael Chevalier, NMLS 1931006. Virginia Chevalier, NMLS 1910631. And we also have Green Mountain Dental Group, the best family dentist in the Denver metro area. You can hit them up just 15 minutes outside of downtown in Lakewood. All the people we've sent over there have said it's a great dental experience, at least for a dental experience, it's about as good as it can get. So sign up for a cleaning x-ray and exam with them and get yourself a free Sonicare toothbrush. The electric toothbrush help you take care of your teeth when you're not going to the dentist. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast, rumor mill edition. Uh, it should be should be a rumor filled off season as it continues on here, given that all of the crazy stuff we're already hearing and the season isn't even over yet. So I know I'm half expecting an Eichel trade like any minute. Yeah. I mean, I think now that Vegas is out, they're going to be like, Oh God, we need him. There's no way Vegas finds room for Eichel, right? They always find a way to do. something. <laughs> they did. They did find a way to fit Petrangelo. But That's ready. And Stone, they just keep finding ways. <laughs> uh, I think I already know the answer to this one, but the other big rumor that people were talking about for Colorado is Seth Jones. The Avs just don't need it on the defensive side, do they? Defensive zone, or I guess defensive side, they don't need him. You know, the other issues with they don't need him, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like to me, he's not a huge upgrade, and then you're—that's another guy. You got to one year, and then you got to pay him when you already got to pay Cal McCarr. God knows what this summer. Yep. It's just I don't think they need him now. I don't think he's enough of an upgrade to freak out about. Like you, you have your core on defense. That just if this is the way you are planning to play, just you need to stick to your identity, stay the course. I will leave it at that. I've already said my part on it, and it pretty much <laughs> agrees with you. Um, I see chat talking about it a little bit. Uh, the Brandon Sod conversation in general, you know, instead of going out there and doing something crazy to get a Matt Kachuk or another another guy in that spot, how reasonable is it for the Avs to find a way to bring Sod back? That's another one where he's one of those mid tier guys that you're like, okay, maybe he'll get through free agency a couple of days and then circle back and just be like, okay, didn't think, didn't get, it's not what we thought it was going to be out here. Maybe we can find a deal here for something reasonable that the apps can work with. Can actually afford. Yeah. I would be surprised if he signed, if he was going to sign here, if he signed before he hit free agency, like at least test the market. Yeah. Because it just doesn't make sense to sign before you see what's out there when you know 
you're going to have to be squeezed in on this team. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the big question, right? Is is how much of the squeeze is going to be league-wide for guys like him, right? It If he hits the market and someone with money says, hey, we'll pay you $6 million, might be hard to say no to that. Yeah. Now. He, he chose a good time to sh- score on one in every four shots. Yeah, the, in the playoffs, uh definitely raised his price tag a little yeah. bit. Even probably. the regular season, he was shooting like 20%. So yeah, it's true. He was, he was to... a super Cy Young, though, and not yeah. many assists anywhere yeah. in this season for Zod, But No, he's... Uh... <laughs> That that's another one. The expansion draft. If like say Donskoy gets taken, then you're going back to him and saying, maybe we'll give you a little bit more than Donskoy, but that's pretty much what we can do now. Yeah. And again, the, the you start talking about moving other pieces out to free up salary, and things get so complicated so quickly that it's hard to really dive into those situations as the Avs try to navigate the cap situation. But. It, uh, a couple of questions here from the chat. Colin asks, what about Tatar? Uh, what happened th- to him? <laughs> yeah, three years ago, I would have loved that, but... Isn't he just a healthy scratch right now? He's, yeah, he's not a starter in Montreal's lineup. He had a fine season, but he's also 31 now, I believe. Uh, he'll be 31 later in the year. So he's not as young as he was. He's not the same scorer that he used to be. He still produces fine, but yeah, it, that's a, the type of player that you're worrying about him not being a second line caliber player very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. That, that's a guy I think we talked about, not this trade deadline, but last trade deadline. Yeah. Even yeah. Pet Petrie, and it was just. Didn't happen. We thought that was something that might happen, but it seems to have fallen off a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> At least yeah. out of what Montreal's not using him, so Right. I mean it worked it worked out okay that the that he didn't get moved, I guess. Mm-hmm. But in the end, Tatar I just don't think is a is a real option for a contending team right now. Oh. Uh, um, where was that other question? Sure, we'll just go to Spence's. What do you think Van could give, would give for Graves? I, I don't know that they will. <laughs> I'd, I'd be interested in hearing what they want to offer because I, yeah. I saw they want to get bigger, even though they're like the third biggest team in the league. Well, that sounds like Vancouver. What, who does, what does their defense even look like? Oh, they only have Schmidt and Myers signed, essentially. Yeah, they got to sign Hughes. I think they have a couple smaller offensive yeah, guys that are going to give a chance to Rathbone or something like that. Yeah, if they ever actually want to commit to Yo Levy, mm-hmm. him too. Yeah, that that's weird grouping. It is Vancouver, so maybe they'll just go get Tyson Berry. Yeah, I thought he would be perfect for Seattle or Vancouver. I thought all along he'd be perfect for Vegas, but then they got Petrangelo, so they didn't need him. Yeah. Well, uh, well, Petrangelo actually was not that good for them this year, but yeah. there's a lot, of EJ, a lot of EJ talk in the chat. There's EJ is just a whole another beast. They got to worry about and figure something out there. Who knows what you can depend on there? Yeah, but I, I mean, look. I, I'm. It's really hard to gauge what EJ's value is going to be around the league because he played, what, three games this year? Uh, but if we assume that he's healthy for next year, there might be teams interested, but certainly not at $6 million. Mm-hmm. Um, So the Avs would probably have to retain to move him. You can't expect to get very much back for him other than just the cap space that you'd be getting. It, the reason you move EJ is because you have another deal where you need to pay someone in the works. You don't just move EJ for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Graves for a fourth. I think Graves has more value than we might think around the league. 
I mean, just defensemen in general, right? Yeah. The league always, always pays a premium for defensemen. Yeah. David Savard got a first round pick at the trade deadline. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, 82 game season. I don't even want to think about it. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a long season comparatively to this year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and now they're talking about expanding the playoffs. It's just like, oh, yes. 82 games. And then that means what? Nothing. To like right. the final play in there, and they let twenty four teams in the playoffs or something ridiculous. <laughs> it's like stupid to me. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want the playoffs expanded. I'll say that for sure. No, boy, it's going to be a fun, fun summer. Rumor, rumor, crazy. Yeah, if this is just the beginning of the rumor mill for this summer, I have no doubt. But Evan, who you got tonight? And who you got to take the cup? I hope Tampa wins. Um, I don't want to see an island. I'm sorry, AJ. I don't want to see <laughs> Islanders Montreal in the finals. I just don't. Um, I might not even watch it if that's the finals. Whereas if Tampa's there, I'll probably have some interest in watching it. So I'll take Tampa just to win one game. Um, and then, yeah, I, I would still pick Tampa over Montreal, although this team is just out of control right now. They can't lose, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, it, they're making it work right right there. I I do think Tampa matches up pretty darn well against them. but I don't even want to know what would happen in Montreal if they won because my friend who I used to play hockey with, he's from Quebec, he was messaging me last night. He's like, <laughs> it's just out of control here. I don't even think they're out of lockdown yet, and they're – doing everything out there. I was like, well, you might be going back into lockdown <laughs> real soon again, <laughs> the way things are going, but that city might blow up if they freaking win this, the cup. Yeah. There you go. AJ's firing you live on the show for not rooting for the aisles. Well, I had a good run. You ready to call in? <laughs> yeah. Live from his car. <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, it's been what 20 28 years 28 years since yeah. the last um, Canadian Cup that's uh that's a minute i don't personally don't think montreal's the team to do it though <laughs> i mean they've gotten this far i don't even freaking know at this point yeah but dallas got this far last year they did and then tampa existed <laughs> Montreal Islanders would just be the biggest, like, I don't care <laughs> who wins this series. <laughs> I, I don't know how you even pick between those two teams. It's like looking in a mirror almost. Yeesh. Just one team has Barzal. Barzal. One, a bunch of one nothing hockey games. Yeah. <laughs> well. Fun. <laughs> I mean, I, I I get it, but also, isn't Tampa winning two in a row kind of boring? I, I agree, it's boring, but at least they they're like built around high end skill players to me. Whereas playing quality hockey, yeah, yeah. Um, but watching Montreal, like I didn't watch it. I honestly haven't watched a ton of hockey since the Avs got knocked out. Kind of stepped away, but watching Montreal a little bit, and it's like seeing Caulfield. It's like. <laughs> the abs didn't have a second line center why did they just see what new hook could have done why couldn't they have just seen what byram could have done like give these guys a chance like you have to play your talent meanwhile montreal vibing with you said it caulfield and then suzuki as well and it's like hmm that would have been fun yeah it was a little frustrating seeing that but that guy is he's such a good scorer like doesn't yep. matter how big, small you are. If you can score goals, if you can do something in this league. No doubt about it. It's uh, skill has never been more important than now in the NHL, in my opinion. So we'll see. Maybe the Az will uh, will go get some more skill, according to one of these rumors, or maybe they'll go get some more size. Who knows? <laughs> it's all nonsense. Or maybe they'll right do now. nothing. I, uh, that might be the most likely situation, to be honest, is, is the do nothing. But the rumors don't like that, Evan. That's not fun. 
No. <laughs> Wacky season. Yeah, exactly right. Get your rumors while you can, folks. Yeah, if you came on the pod every day, something they're not going to do anything. We'll be uh, we'll be here to shoot them down every time y'all send them our way. So, no, that'll be the whole podcast. Yeah, no, just, just no weeks of us saying this will not happen. All right, next. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Guess we can wrap up the show for the day. Evan, any final thoughts on rumor market? Avs off season needs must dos. Um. Yeah, I think what they just said, Sackick will make a trade no one saw coming, as usual. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. I didn't. No one saw the Sod trade coming until I think it was like two days before, where Friedman's like, "I've heard the Avs are sniffing around Sod," and then next thing you know, he's on the team. And then you have Taze. It's just like anything could happen, but this is just going to be a weird summer. Flat cap, everything. So interested to see how this plays out, and hopefully Tampa wins tonight. That's my final thoughts. <laughs> Sorry, AJ. <laughs> well, and sorry, Varley. I like Varley. You hate to see it. He, is he the only ex-Av left? I think so. I don't think Tampa has any ex-Avs. Well, they have Spencer Martin, but he doesn't really count. <clears throat> um, nope. Actually, in the lineup, I don't think there's any other ex-Avs. Uh, Yep, only twenty one million and a lot to go for the the DNVR yacht. Thank you very much, Sasha. Uh, thank you everybody for watching, listening today. We appreciate all y'all a ton. Um, we will be back on Monday. Be sure to like and subscribe to the video as well. Yeah, you know all that good stuff. I think AJ maybe will be off again on Monday, but I'll certainly ba- be back. Maybe Evan, maybe Blaze will be on the show. We'll we'll figure it out for you. We hope to see you then. Until then, hope y'all have a great weekend.